Thank you, Mysterious Voice, and welcome back to Around the Weird. I'm your co-host, uh, Dr. Strike the Sun, Lucas, and I'm here with Mr. Nothing himself to talk about an amazing spaghetti snow western, Il Grande Silencio, otherwise known in English as The Great Silence. Yes, hello, Lucas. Uh, it's it's interesting that you say spaghetti snow western, because I hadn't realized how few snow westerns I had seen until uh, until this movie. Like, you don't really see snow in in westerns. Yeah, uh, yeah. Red Dead Redemption too, but not not much beyond that. Uh, yeah, you see it a little bit in Red Dead Redemption in one little part too, uh, but um, I think. I have seen McCabe and Mrs. Miller, I think is the name of it. That's another snow western that very much has the same kind of e exact same vibe as this film, exact same kind of ending as this film. Um, uh, so, yeah, but you don't see it a lot. It does make a lot of sense uh, that there would be snow in the Wild West, given the like geography in America where... You know, this is a kind of, uh, you know, this one is set in Utah, very cold there uh, in the winter. Um, but yeah, you don't see a lot of snow westerns, although I think it fits really well. Uh, it it really adds something to the, the I don't know, the cinematography, mm -hmm. I guess. The real struggle that these these characters are dealing with and offers yeah. one of the the coolest uh kills in the in the movie i think which i'm getting ahead of myself no you're getting um, ahead of yourself a little bit yeah <laughs> uh but yeah this movie comes from 1968 uh directed by sergio corbucci uh who was known for westerns but also action comedy sort of things uh, making movies up to the 90s uh, he um, he even said like oh I'm tired of of uh, one of the quotes is like he's every time he finishes a western he's like I'm tired of uh, writing westerns but once he gets into it he's like oh yeah this is this is why I enjoy it. Uh, written That's by kind of Ryan how I feel. Amendola, uh, starring Jean Louis uh, Tritignal Tritignant. Um, I don't know how to pronounce his last name, uh, but he plays um, Silenzio and Klaus Kinski. Uh, who awesome. quite amazingly plays uh, um, Loco in this movie? Yeah, he is the he is definitely one of the best parts of the movie, if not the best part. Mm -hmm. I think the sheriff was my favorite part personally, but Loco, I liked everybody in it. I liked Silencio, maybe the least of the three main characters, uh, but I loved the sheriff and I loved Loco. He was so Klaus Kinski was so scary. In, in this film <laughs> and in in a way that like i don't think i've seen in a while in a film because he's j like well i'll let you continue introducing and then we can talk about no, that's loco all i was gonna say them. okay well I, I i think for me loco it's like he's so sure of himself and so confident uh like he just knows he's gonna get away with everything and he's always making jokes and he's not worried about anything and he doesn't lose his cool and he says he won't lose his cool and he just is so monstrous he's so evil <laughs> yeah and as we'll come to find uh quite uh racist and nationalist um you only see that in a couple of his comments but it's there uh he's yeah. he's 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 kind of a mesmerizing character i yeah he's so he is he chews up the scene every single time he's on there like you can't take your eyes off of him because he's just so uh yeah confident in himself and i think um you know i think it's the blonde hair and the blue eyes they're just very distracting <laughs> uh yeah. And the scarf, like his his character, is is iconic in my eyes. Like <laughs> yeah. it's 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 such a an interesting uh, look. Like it, it's like I want to find this guy cool, but he's doing such horrible things. Yeah, he's he's dress. I love the way he wears his scarf on his head sideways. Is <laughs> a green a, a green scarf that way. He's got this giant fur coat that doesn't seem to fit the rest of his clothes. Uh, and he's got this weird, 
also green hat um that is like seems to fit his head around but just seems too big <laughs> to me mm-hmm. um and you know, this is not related to the movie but like green hats have been ruined for me in china because it just means like you're a cuckold <laughs> which he is not but when i was when i saw that i all i could think was like cuckold oh my god anyway yeah he's super you love to hate him i mm-hmm. suppose mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah uh i th- i saw that you were not as big of a fan of silencio you thought it was a bit boring yeah you have such a fascinating uh character in loco and that and the mm. protagonist is a guy who doesn't talk like he, there, there's some interesting elements of his backstory but yeah i like the focus on him was just um it was it was boring like whenever loco wasn't on screen i found myself bored um <laughs> yeah well I, I think i really liked silenzio's actor like i thought he did a great job um with silent acting like it's not a silent film but he the way he used his eyes uh, i thought he did a great job acting with his eyes and just small facial expressions and the way he looked at you know things uh and the way he moved uh in some scenes i thought was really effective and kind of sold this i helped sell this idea of this sort of morally righteous person who's against um outlaw not outlaw well um uh uh bounty hunters like loco who use the law to indiscriminately kill basically um and commit violence and that's i think one of the things that makes loco so interesting because he's like i guess a lawful evil kind of character if you're thinking of you know D D or whatever because he he does some things that are illegal uh, by the end of the movie, but he definitely like justifies all of his actions by the law. And he constantly makes a point that he's doing things according to the law. Um, but Silencio, I think the actor does a really amazing job in selling this sort of morally righteous kind of figure. But I think you're right because he doesn't get to speak. It's like, I think he could be really interesting. It seemed to me that the actor could embody the role but because he's a mute, you can't really know what he's thinking uh, other than he's like a morally righteous guy. So he's a bit one note in that sense. Uh, so that's a shame because I, I thought he was a great actor for what he had, uh, in my opinion. I don't know if you felt the same way or if it was just kind of like, he's there. Yeah, there's some good elements where he where where mm-hmm. uh, the actor um, Tr- Tritigan is, uh, is acting pretty well. But I, 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 I'm, I'm drawing comparisons to like the Mad Max movies where he, M- M- Max doesn't talk very often in those movies. He's also a silent person, but when he does talk, it's impactful. Um, mm. And so like, uh, like you can make that work, but having a com- completely silent character kind of takes away a little bit from the, from the movie. Um, especially yeah. if it's, if it, like, I think it could work with a side character or something like that, but like the yeah. main character, not, not so much. Yeah. Maybe if he wasn't the main character, cause he's so much of the focus and like, yeah, you're, you're a good guy. I, I think it's maybe slightly unfair to compare him to Mad Max only in the sense that, um, he can, he can talk and he, when he does talk like you said he has something important but silenzio is literally silent because his throat was cut uh which we can get into that i guess we could start with that because that's the backstory of who he mm-hmm. is right as a child um his his throat was cut by uh one of our antagonists not the main one loco but somebody who funds loco uh a corrupt banker shopkeeper Policut. and Policut, yeah Policut, thank you Policut, uh is a corrupt banker and politician it's just like a one-two combo of <laughs> evil sin mm-hmm. uh you know that kind of thing um at a, at a young age his throat was cut uh and this led to him um sort of hating uh, bounty hunters and and outlaws and this kind of thing and becoming a 
wanting to get revenge but he has a more he has like a moral code right uh where he's not going to act first he's going to uh draw the ire of of the other person and then respond with his mauser uh and <laughs> shoot them dead because he's a very quick draw um that way he's acting in self-defense uh so yeah yeah he does have a pretty interesting backstory Polycut does figure in there somehow he's also pretty a pretty nasty figure in this sense very corrupt well, the thing that he's doing is he's like sort of having people killed that he doesn't like uh yeah he, he's kind of more insidious than loco because he's like he's yeah. not he's not he's ordering the killings in the first place um yeah, and that's he's, right he's funding loco and without him maybe loco wouldn't be doing what he's doing yeah that's so, right so yeah i guess we should top. explain what how is he doing this legally as a politician without like some kind of trouble from the from the um constituents that he uh, represents which would be that um snow oh god snow cape no what was the town called I yeah I don't remember the name. Oh my god, that's important. Snow Hill. <laughs> Snow Hill, thank you. Uh Snow Hill has had a very very strong blizzard and a really bad winter. There is snow everywhere. Feet high, multiple feet high. Um horses can barely get through. Uh carriages would have had a very difficult time. There is no such thing as a car. It's it's before the turn of the 20th century i think 1898 mm -hmm. um and because of this there's no trade there's not a lot of food um and so some people have turned to banditry uh and and stealing just to get by not because they're immoral or bad people they just want to survive uh and a lot of those people have taken to banditry they've left the town they've left snow hill and they go out um uh, kind of into the mountainous range um uh to hide out um and so a like a uh what is that kill what is that called uh a wanted poster mm -hmm. uh, they're wanted dead or alive uh, for a cash reward, which uh, makes Loco the leader of a, a gang of um, of um, um, bounty hunters interested because there's quite a few. And the reason that uh, there are so many of these people uh, with uh, a wanted poster on, on them uh, why they're all wanted is because Polica wants to buy out their houses and and the things that they have for cheap um, because he is a capitalist essentially. <laughs> the desperation is on display as they um, the 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 outlaws the the bandits outside of town they they hold the sheriff up uh, and steal like they take his horse and because yeah. <laughs> uh, they're going to eat it uh, mm -hmm. and then the sheriff has to um sort of wander back into town through the cold frozen almost yeah. and that's uh that he runs into uh silenzio and loco who are sharing a, a stagecoach but don't really yeah. talk to each other at that right. point um so uh yeah you you see the the desperation and like you see both loco and silenzio kind of killing people silenzio uh doing um the or killing some bounty hunters uh again because he he doesn't respect them uh and he's angry with them and then loco torturing a guy to find out where more bandits are and that that's strict that, like i commented to you as i was watching it like loco is silenzio's wario <laughs> that's for sure they are they are definitely on opposite ends um of, of the not opposite ends of the spectrum uh, but they're like, like I said before, I think Loco, I mean, eventually he does do illegal things, but he's very much like a lawful evil kind of guy, um, for the most part. Um, and Silenzio is, is very much like definitely a morally righteous, good guy. Um, 
who is, I guess, also lawful, like a lawful good kind of person. <laughs> um, and they're diametrically opposed in that way. I, I love the sheriff because uh, he's kind of a bumbling idiot mm -hmm. uh, who's assigned by the governor or whatever um, to try and quell the the violence and banditry and and all the um, bounty hunting going on in the area too. Um, and he's doing his best. I, I thought um, thought he was a very fun addition and a very interesting um, character to bounce off of Loco, who he has no respect for at all. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, I, uh, I, I didn't really, um, like, I wasn't really interested in the sheriff until maybe, uh, like, the bar scene. And then, like, the way that he treats Loco at that point and is just like, you're, you're going to jail, buddy. Uh, like yeah. that, that really struck me as like, Oh, this guy is a, is a fascinating character now. Yeah. Well, one of the instigating, uh, elements of the plot that we haven't gotten to yet, uh, we've sort of given the backdrop for what the bounty hunters are doing in this area. But, um, uh, two of the bandits return cause they want to go home. And they don't care if they go to jail. It's better than freezing their ass off out in the wilderness. Um, cause at least in jail, they'll be warm because <laughs> there's a fire in there, I guess. Um, or they're in a building at least. Um, but one of those is the husband of Pauline, mm -hmm. who's this very beautiful Italian woman. That was kind of a weird thing. I know spaghetti westerns are Italian. She, she's not an Italian woman. No. Oh, um, she's not. She, uh, her name is Vanetta something. I, I forget her full name, but she was actually an American actress who starred in quite a few uh, oh. black exploitation films in the seventies, including Shaft in Africa and Blackula. That would, I guess, make sense why you know so many people were commenting about her, uh, like black husband, uh, and co people. Uh, one person made a joke about how she should go to Africa because it's warmer. No offense. I just thought she was like a dark skinned Italian person. <laughs> I, I I actually had to look it up because I I was very unclear about that and it makes a difference how I view this movie if they yeah. if they just had an Italian woman like play a black woman. I I think I didn't realize that she was black. I thought it was just her husband. I did I don't maybe I just uh missed the comment about somebody saying that she's black directly. I knew her husband was. Uh anyway. Uh, I didn't know that. That does change how I see the movie now. <laughs> oh, man. Do they comment on her being black? Yes, they do. Loco specifically says, uh, well, he comments oh. on the husband, but he says, uh, strange age when we live in when it, where a black man is worth uh, as much as a white man. Oh, no. He, I think he says more than a white man. But yeah, yeah. I remember that. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it, it, then nobody says that she's black direct. Anyway, from what I remember. But anyway loco comes and harasses pauline because mm -hmm. he's looking for pauline's husband he eventually kill loco eventually kills her husband uh, and leaves the body there tells her don't bury it until i collect the reward and then she immediately uh, buries it yeah as a big mm -hmm. f you to him and she hires silenzio mm -hmm. to kill um to kill loco because she wants revenge um polycut wants pauline to be her mistress and that is the reason he had a bounty put on her husband also because uh he was like a bandit and he just wants whatever he can get because he's a ruthless cutthroat capitalist i think this was a pretty strong like anti-capitalist kind of movie <laughs> mm -hmm. um well they specifically sure. say that like uh paula cut was specifically cutting hours or something like that for pauline's husband which drove him to banditry like he yeah that's right made the conditions that caused him to rob which sounds yeah. very familiar in this in this in this uh modern time period god it just things just don't change <laughs> yeah paula cut also does try to hire loco to kill silenzio because he, he knows who silenzio is L uh because he was there uh when uh 
Silenzio had his cut throat cut. Uh, and also before Silenzio took revenge on Polycut by shooting off his thumbs, um, or not both his thumbs, one of his thumbs for his shooting hand. Uh, so he could never uh, shoot again with that hand. And, you know, it's a lot harder to use your non-dominant hand, that kind of thing. Uh, but Loco, in his just pure confidence, one, already knows all about Silenzio and is not worried about him because he's not going to lose his cool. So he's not going to strike first. Uh, eventually in the bar scene, he does strike with a fist, not with a gun, though. But... He's just like not interested at all in the offer. I think he does does say like, if you want me to do this, you got to offer real money or something like that. <laughs> but he's not going to do it anyway. Um, he's just like a playful troll. Uh, yeah, I, I got that vibe <laughs> from the movie because like, like just when he's told about Silenzio and what how he goads people into like throwing cigarettes or or just annoying trolling you to in, into pulling your gun. Uh, like like loco's just like in his mind he's like oh yes i know how to defeat this guy i just won't i won't pull yeah. my gun and then you see the bar scene and like this is quite honestly my my favorite scene in the movie yeah. like i'll let you describe what happens in it uh well they're playing uh before this um uh, pauline had tried to sell the house uh her house uh, which was worth five thousand U.S. dollars uh, for one thousand U.S. dollars, which was the price for um, uh, that uh, Silenzio had wanted to take out Loco. Uh, Polycut did not want that because he knew he was trying to get it out of her directly, but he knew what it was for. Um, he knew it was to have Loco killed, who is sort of I wouldn't say Polycut's right hand man because he's he's uh loco is too calcul he's like one too calculated and also two too chaotic to really be like a uh a, a henchman for anybody but he's sort of in that role for now um um uh Alicut wants her to be his mistress uh instead she doesn't want to pay that price rightfully so he tries to make advances on her um and she rejects him and she comes back to silenzio and says i'm sorry i didn't get the thousand um there's somebody who, uh, who would give me the money and, and pay the price but the price they ask is too much i wouldn't give that to them but i would give it to you which is an implication of like uh, we can start a romantic and sexual relationship uh <laughs> Later in the movie, we will. Silenzio, before she even can, like finishes her thought, uh, makes his way to the bar where uh, uh, Loco and his and his boys are gambling, playing poker. And Silenzio is just listening for a while, and then he's watching. And this is where, like, this morally righteous guy uh, isn't so morally righteous because it's you know. Now you see some of his tactics to get what he wants so he can get paid. Uh, I guess to kill some immoral people, right? But still, it's like he's just trying to make them act first. So he goads them. He throws the... Um, he has some incredible aim, by the way. <laughs> yeah. he, I guess, I mean, he has incredible aim with the gun, too. So this is just showing, like, this dude has crazy ability. Uh, but he throws, he, he lights a cigar, uh, puffs on it and throws a cigarette right when, uh, uh, not the cigarette, the match into the whiskey, uh, the, the bottle, not the bottle, the, the glass of whiskey that Loco is about to drink from a very far distance, I might say. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like probably 10 feet away. That's pretty impressive. Uh, and Loco just kind of smiles and, like asks like are you trying to goad me into uh attacking uh trying to shoot you because i'm not going to do that um and then he picks up his glass and, and starts a uh, well he took out the um match asked that question then he starts to go for a drink and then he throws <laughs> and he throws the cigar in there <laughs> 
again. But not only that, Loco thing. says, uh, like, I think he, someone better take my gun. So, like, he's 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 taunting uh, Silenzio, knowing exactly what he what yeah, his methods right. are, and then he's like, I'm not even, I'm not even gonna have my gun on me. I'm gonna I'm gonna let you like like stew in your in, in yeah. what you're trying to do to me. Yeah, yeah. You, I, I think he he takes off his gun to go uh, to uh, get at him at Silenzio, so he can't be the morally righteous one anymore, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, but then also says like. It's not going to be me who strikes first. It's going to be you. You can't trust me to do that uh, or something like that. Uh, you're going to have to trust yourself. Uh, and then uh, he eventually, they have a fight, a fist fight. Uh, Silen- uh, Silenzio is getting his face punched in a couple times, but then um, Silenzio grabs a log and whacks him across the side of the face or the back of the head or something. Mm-hmm. Uh, knocks him out, destroying the bar's uh, door. Mm-hmm. Um, and at that point, Loco did lose his cool. Uh, I, I, and w- Aim went to grab his gun. Um, but then the sheriff, who's also got a good, um, good shot, uh, shot the gun away and arrested him. Uh, and this is when we start to see I mean, I, I kind of liked the sheriff a little bit before, but this, yeah, I think when we really start to see more of just how much disgust and disdain he has for um, bounty hunters, he arrests him, uh, Silenzio, uh, not Silenzio, Loco tries to uh, talk his way out of this and play it cool. Um, he's already had his bounty money confiscated by this guy because he doesn't trust him. Mm-hmm. Um so uh loco can't pay his um his uh bond bond oh my gosh jail his ba- bond yes. his um fee his bail his bail yeah bail thank you i'm sorry i knew it was a b word <laughs> uh yeah couldn't pay his bail um yeah, I just the the bar fight scene is so good. I mean, it was like a classic western kind of thing, but without the gunfight, that mm-hmm. was super cool to me. <laughs> yeah, I I really liked it. Um, and to add more about Loco, like um, and the sheriff, like Loco says to the sheriff, um, adding to the racism that it is his patriotic duty to exterminate the bandits. Uh, mm-hmm. So, like, just hearing the uh, like the 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 idea of like um, exterminating criminals, like, where mm-hmm. have you heard that before? And given that this is this is Italy, like, and it, part of the movie is like a an allegory for um, fascist Italy. In my yeah, opinion. that's but, right. I was reading that this was like um, inspired by like the like Malcolm X and um, Che Guevara being assassinated uh so it does make a lot of sense that one this is an anti-capitalist um statement but also you know you got this sort of jingoistic nationalist psychopath who is so confident in everything he does and just knows he's going to get away with it um (laughs) um yeah i i really enjoy that um the relationship between loco and the sheriff because um like the sheriff although a cab for sure um Mm -hmm. he does seem to actually really care about like trying to do the right thing uh and he really just is so disgusted with like extrajudicial forces uh like these bounty hunters and tells him like we're gonna build a country like a nation Mm -hmm without scum like you basically <laughs> we don't well, need people um, like you loco tries to bribe his way out of jail yeah sheriff, that's right um indicating his values which are which are money uh and when the sheriff is like oh we need to feed the bandits um in order to prevent them from ransacking the town showing compassion to the poor which i like mm-hmm. uh all loco can think is this is valuable money and you're just letting it get away yeah yeah i i I think maybe the sheriff might be the only, I I think he's a little racist, but other than that, um, the only like actually morally righteous person, like Silenzio is generally, but 
the like when you see the way he's goading loco as evil as he is it's like does he do this to everybody uh maybe they do deserve it but you know to me that kind of put to question like how like morally good of a person silenzio is because uh, he's also a murderer right mm -hmm. uh, so there is still that and it is extrajudicial in its own right but it, yeah so it's quite complicated i think that's quite an interesting element to um to the to the movie and i mean he is still a cop and he uh i i like i can't remember exactly what he says there is something funny that um <laughs> maybe it does put to question how morally good the sheriff is but he's like talking about like loco is trying to say that there's no difference between you and me like you are the police and you kill uh and i'm a bounty hunter and i kill uh uh but you know uh uh the sheriff says it's not killing if it's the police it's punishment okay maybe that that's where the a cab part comes in <laughs> well but... maybe maybe what they're trying to say is that uh the only thing the only real difference between loco and the sheriff is government sanctioned and yeah that's right yeah it could currently be that. loco is sanctioned <laughs> by the yeah. government yeah like... there is no difference at that time because they were the bounty hunters were until the end of the movie based on loco's actions like generally accepted by society as much as the police were uh so i guess that flies in the face of what i was trying to say but i still think the cop is maybe the only like actually morally good person but not really because he's still <laughs> saying things like that and a police officer but I think he's like a better person, quote unquote, than Silencio. And the sheriff decides to take Loco to another city to actually face justice. Uh, they pass by the bandits and the sheriff says, hey, there's food over there. Mm -hmm. um, if you if you just go there. And I think the sheriff even shoots one guy in the hand because all those bandits want to kill Loco. Um, but mm -hmm. they manage to pass by. And um, as they're near um, an ice lake, uh, uh, Loco's like, I need to poop, my fella. <laughs> and um, the, the the sheriff's like, okay, I'll untie your hands. And uh, he turns around and Loco somehow finds a gun in the snowbank, which I thought was funny. I Just, think it's a body he left behind or a gun from a body he left behind. It's very convenient, but that would mm. also explain why Loco wanted to stop there. Yeah. Um, and loco threatens the sheriff and shoots the ice lake and it's one of the few issues i have with the movie is that we never see the sheriff die so i was just left yeah to think i thought he was going like, to come back locally come at the last minute but mm. um the sheriff just dies there <laughs> yeah I'll, I'll make a point about that a little bit later when we get to the ending so i can explain that i thought he was going to come back at that point like because we don't see him die but then i was also thinking by the end of the movie like if Loco is actually going to do that, I guess he's still like lawful and uh, lawful evil because he didn't kill directly. Right. He he assisted in the murder, so to speak, uh, if you're like trying to write uh, right around the actual killing. Uh, it was Mother Nature who killed him, not not him, because he didn't shoot the law enforcement technically, mm -hmm. although he is responsible for the murder he didn't actually uh directly kill him um the sheriff dies a little bit later off screen but i really thought he was going to come back because i was thinking like this is a pretty bleak movie uh but maybe loco and silenzio are gonna have a really cool like uh, um uh face to face um standoff at the end and you know the good guy will win and and the only reason he's gonna win is because the sheriff's gonna come back at the last minute or whatever but his horse ran off so i i imagine what happened is that the sheriff did get out of the water but then because it's absolutely freezing out and he couldn't get to his horse because it ran away uh that he froze to death out of the water that's what i think happened well that's really sad 
yeah. Well, I guess it's better. I don't know. That's probably worse than free uh, drowning, maybe in freezing water. I don't know. Neither are good. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, things don't look good for the sheriff. Um, he's that he he's probably the only like um, like intervening force that's preventing this town from going to hell and now the the villains are the the inmates are running the asylum uh and uh paula cut immediately like after um after silencio and pauline uh get it on and and have sex um uh they, like uh we see like paula cut and loco's men can be like Con convening like um mm -hmm. approaching pauline's uh place and we see paul like a flashback that shows paula cut getting his thumb shot off for yeah. for the, for the revenge that um that uh silenzio saw and paula cut wants to kill silenzio because he's mm -hmm. he, he he also wants to make sure this man is dead and not interfering anymore loco after he uh shot the sheriff into the lake uh went back to his uh, group in their in their hideout uh, and he tried to convince them let's go to the town the bandits are going to come because they think they're going to get food uh, which they were supposed to uh, and uh, Silenzio you know he, he makes the talks about Silenzio and, and this kind of thing being there and uh, you know the sheriff is not going to be a problem uh, because he came in chains right and he needed to get Help out. And the one guy with the weird red eye issue um, was like, that plan sounds terrible. We're not going to do that. <laughs> and Loco is like, just casually walks up to him and says the most effective thing he can possibly say. Yeah, but uh, Silenzio is the one who killed your brother. What? Let's go. And then all of that stuff happens. They're all convening and they're all narrowing down uh, Polycut and his little creep henchmen come into Pauline's house. Pauline has been nursing and sexing Silenzio. <laughs> <laughs> nursing with her, you know what? Anyway, um, uh, Paul, uh, the henchman uh, holds um, 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 Silenzio down and Polycut tries to rape um oh, yeah. Pauline. Uh and the one the the henchman tries to burn his uh puts uh Silenzio's hand in burning coals to cripple him so he can't use his hand anymore. Uh but Silenzio manages to get out, knock him out, shoot what's his name? Um Polycut dead. Mm -hmm. Um and then the other guy just kind of dies a little bit later after warning Loco, I believe, that Silenzio is around. Um, I forgot who. There's another woman who was the love interest, kind of, of the sheriff who is going around as well. Um, the the red hair woman. Mm -hmm. uh, she also gets shot by Loco. Because uh, she tries to shoot him and shoots his hat off. Uh, they're looking for Silenzio to enact justice for the guy's brother and just get rid of this problem because he hunts bounty hunters. Um, and then the bandits come, so they go searching for them. Pauline is hiding with Silenzio, right? Mm -hmm. And she, oh, she tries to go. Uh, get to the bandits first, I think, to stop them, but the bandits get caught by Loco's gang and they're mm -hmm. taken to the bar uh, where the bar scene happened. Uh, and I think the next best scene in the movie happens. <laughs> yeah. You, you have that traditional scene where the, the Western hero like recovers and finally delivers justice to, well, the, to the bad guys. But yeah, well, Pauline is warned that Silencio has to have a standoff with Loco at, Otherwise, the the people are going to be shot to death uh, by all the people. And it's going to be one-on-one. -on -one. His henchmen are not going to help. But Pauline says, it's a trap. And Silenzio, being the morally righteous hero, says, no, I'm the main character. 
I can survive anything. <laughs> no, he doesn't say anything because he's mute, but that's what he would have said if he could talk. <laughs> Yeah, but it's, it's uh it's it's it was a definitely a, a shocking scene for me um uh like loco approaches the the bar where um basically all the men have their the guns trained on the outside uh mm -hmm. <laughs> think, Silenzio approaches yeah sorry Silenzio approaches and loco is like like is ready for him um uh, and I think, um, if I recall correctly, uh, like Loke, or like one of the men shoots Silenzio. Yeah, in his left hand, not his shooting hand. It's the guy with the red eye whose brother was killed. Mm -hmm. uh, shoots him first in his left hand, and he goes, uh, and then uh, I think Loco walks up to the the door frame, and Silenzio goes for his gun, but the guy shoots him again. And then Loco takes out his gun, shoots him in the head, and our hero is murdered. And just when you think that someone is going to come and save the day, that there's going to be some semblance of justice for, yeah. for Silenzio, there isn't. Pauline no. runs up, and she is she is also shot dead. Yeah, and then all of the bandits, or all of the, the poor people who were um, taken advantage of by Polycut, uh to create the conditions that ruin their lives um and make make force them into uh breaking the law and and punishing them and all that stuff they're all shot dead brutally and then loco tells him leave him there we'll collect them later all according to the law and rides off into the sunset like a hero would. And it's like, what the fuck? Yes, so, into the sunrise. Let me tell you, like, when I was watching this, like, uh, like, um, Silenzio was shot, and I was like, oh, surely he'll come back from this. Shot in the head, I'm like, oh, wow, that's, that's, he's not coming back from that. And then Pauline, like, you think, oh, she's going to grab the gun uh, while Loco is mm -hmm. distracted and, and shoot him and receive some semblance of justice. She's shot, and my mouth is agape at this point. And he, like, Loco turns the gun on all the bandits, and I'm just like, whoa, like, there's no one left to stop this man. And I, I commented to you as I was watching it, like, my God, what, what the hell? What is this movie? Uh, and it's just like that, that it's such an effective way to completely flip the script on what a Western is and also portray it in the most realistic way possible. Yeah. Uh, the Cormac McCarthy system. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It, it was such a good Western. Like, I, I would say it's like an anti-Western in the way um because it it has all the tropes um it's a little bit bleaker maybe in some senses that than some westerns are um obviously the ending is much bleaker because the good guy doesn't save the day but like maybe the whole movie is a little bit more bleak uh because you have this psychopath who's totally confident and just knows he's gonna get away with everything the whole time but you still feel like silenzio the way he's portrayed is like uh, you know the silent strong type who who will save the day at the end uh and because you didn't actually see the sheriff die there's still that in the back of your head thinking like he's going to come back uh, and he's going to be like the deciding factor in this this uh, conflict here never happens because he's already dead silenzio gets killed pauline gets killed everybody's dead and they just ride off into the sunrise. Oh, we'll get the money later. It's not well, even there, important there is, to them. Like, writing <laughs> afterwards that says, like, because of these killings, it turned public perception against mm -hmm. bounty killing. But that's not solace. <laughs> You're still yeah. deeply, deeply saddened by everything that happens at the end of this movie. Oh, oh people don't like them anymore. Hooray. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> that, yeah, I think, like... Yeah, Klaus Kinski, what an actor for this evil role. Like, he was so scary in his confidence and his swagger and just, like, knowing that he could get away with everything and doing everything according to the law. 
just like what a sick bastard <laughs> <laughs> that's that is a perfect um uh description of him and in my notes like what when i wrote what, what i liked what i thought was good what i thought was bad i wrote uh loco in exclamation mar uh, marks like i like loco is is a perfect character klaus plays him to perfection uh like one of the many um like many good things about this movie is is loco the the, the bar tension and the ballsy mm -hmm. ending like i i I, you're hard pressed to find another Western that um, that actually does an ending like this. That doesn't just fall yeah. into the the shootout trope or the the bad guy gets the good guy in in the end. It's, yeah, it's very yeah. very like fascinating um, how the, how this movie just portrays the West mm -hmm. as it might have been. Yeah, uh, I think, like I said before, McCabe and Mrs. Miller is a very similar vibe. I mean, it also ends like in a shootout similar, not 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 in this horrifying way, but very it's more of a like. It's very ugly and it's more of a chase um, and a chase and run kind of thing. And it's just brutal to watch and depressing. Also a very kind of anti very much an anti-capitalist movie, but yeah it's this movie is such an affecting film and just plays with what you know like what the tropes are uh and plays with your expectations and uh i just think i'm very happy that i chose this film <laughs> although you know with some of these italian films at the time the the sound quality is like I don't know what was going on in Italy at the time, but they needed mm. to stop. <laughs> that's that's one of the things I complained about, the horrible sound editing. We saw a little bit of that in the Battle of Algiers, but it wasn't yeah. as big of a problem. But here, and like with so many other movies, you, you would think that like, because they used American actors, you think they'd ha be able to like communicate to uh, like, uh, like Hollywood and say, hey, how are you doing your sound editing? Let's borrow some of that. Um, mm. But... It, it's really distracting at times because the the sound editing is is it's not only bad with like the the voice dubbing but it's also just just mm. things sound like they shouldn't in this movie and it's it's not yeah. ideal and then like i don't care much for silenzio as i've said before um his actor does a fine job but silenzio is kind of boring and then the yeah. rest of, like like whenever loco's not on the screen it felt pretty boring uh unfortunately yeah, sure. so like i really enjoyed like those parts where Loco yeah. and Silenzio were having a showdown. I think the prop, like for me, the rest of the movie was good. I loved it. I mean, for me, I put five stars on, on it because, but I think like definitely Loco is just so amazing in the movie and he just chews up the scene. I don't think the rest of it is boring. It's just that he's so goddamn good. That it's like, why are you not on the screen anymore? I like watching you. <laughs> You're a menace to society and it's great. Uh, but uh, what I wanted to say uh, about the ending and that why I think you don't see the, the, the sheriff die on screen is because apparently there were three endings, um, mm -hmm. which maybe you had read about, um, Obviously, we watched the bleak ending, uh, which I think is the best ending. But then there's like, uh, it was, I guess, released for the holidays, uh, like end of the year kind of holidays. And um, they wanted to have a happy ending in which the, the sheriff comes back to town right at the standoff uh, and on a horse that he found somewhere in the middle of a blizzard. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I don't understand that, but the sheriff comes back to uh, Snow Hill and um, is the deciding factor, as I was expecting, uh, in, in this conflict. And, you know, things end up very happily and uh, Silenzio becomes the deputy for uh, the sheriff, um, which would have been like a, that's what I was expecting out of the film. Like, that's how I felt like things were going to move. Um, maybe not the deputy part, but still, like, I that was how I was expecting. I don't know if that's exactly how you were feeling, 
like as you were watching it yeah that's like that's exactly what i thought was going to happen because that's what happens in every western movie yeah or like in the in the traditional western movie but yeah, yeah like yeah. i'm kind of happy it didn't like I, yeah. i'm glad we got this ending because it feels fresh it feels yeah emotional the the third ending is like an ambiguous one which i think would have just made me angry and i think is the worst ending um and it's like sheriff's still dead the the shootout happens relatively the way it is uh happens like the guy shoots him guy shoots him again but then klaus uh not klaus i'm sorry that's the actor's name loco decides that i'm just gonna let bygones be bygones and walk away from this so you don't that's know loco is <laughs> no that's not at all <laughs> That would have made no sense uh, and would have been a horrible ending. Like the good ending was what I was expecting. It wouldn't have been as fresh and uh, exciting and like, wow, I, I felt moved. And like this movie really had something to say and really hit its points very clearly. Cops were the same as ban uh, as um, as outlaws, extrajudicial forces. They only have government sanction approval. Uh, capitalism is an opportunistic evil kind of uh institution ruining people's lives and creating creating the um conditions where people commit crime and that kind of stuff if it didn't have the bad ending it wouldn't hurt so much and wouldn't feel so true uh and relatable i think yeah yeah that's pretty much what i was thinking <laughs> i just I, i i was not expecting that ending at yeah all. it was brutal it was amazing and brutal <laughs> i i don't have anything else to say other than what character did you relate to most that's usually our last question of the day um that's unless you have something uh, else to, to say to say i guess maybe the sheriff and being annoyed by loco and not really wanting to condone whatever silenzio is doing um But like, there's not a lot of because I can't relate to Silenzio because I'm not right out here righteously murdering anybody, and I can't <laughs> relate to Loco because he's he's a he's a fascist. So um, yeah, that's right. I would say the sheriff, I guess for similar reasons, like just absolutely disgusted with fascists. I do think the sheriff is doing his best as a cop. So you know, you, you can't give him too much credit. But I do think he's like. I think he does want the best uh but what i think makes me relate to him the most is that like even though he's doing his best and he's really trying to take control he's out of his element like he doesn't realize the forces that are <laughs> around him he doesn't uh but he's still kind of being brave uh and putting his best uh face on to deal with uh people like loco or or um Oh my gosh, what's his name? Polycut, uh, who is a corrupt politician and trying to uh, maneuver around the sheriff. Uh, the sheriff does stand up for his beliefs, which I think is admirable. Um, you know, won't won't really listen to uh, Polycut and his little maneuverings as well as the bribery from Loco. But I think I relate to the sheriff the most because I've. I often feel like out of my element. <laughs> That's um, always a good question for you to ask because I know you do that on every movie. Yeah. Um, I don't know if you're going to do it on this next movie that we're going to watch. <laughs> I'll try. I'll find a way. <laughs> And so, yeah. Uh, what uh, is the next the movie here, for February? I, this is usually the part where I um, where we talk about what we're going to watch next. And I don't. I think you're going to hate me on this um, because this might be this might be story of the eye quality movie. Um, fuck yes let's do uh, it let's go uh, <laughs> it, we we don't watch a lot of trash cinema uh, true movies, we've been watching uh, classics yeah well no i mean like when i say trash cinema i don't mean bad movies i mean movies that are intentionally made to be trash as an artistic statement oh so the movie that we're watching um and i don't know if you've seen this before is by john waters and it is called pink flamingos made in the 70s i have heard of it i have not watched it Every I, single thing that I've read about it, it suggests it's going to be the most awful experience of our lives. But I, 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 I'm looking forward to it. I promise you, I have been watching worse movies, but I'm looking forward to it. I've been wanting to watch a John Waters film for a long time. 
I don't know yeah, if this is the yeah. best entry point, but I've heard so much about him and he seems so influential that like, I'm really excited about this, even if it's garbage. Like, I think it will be a really interesting experience. He looks like a very peculiar man, but yeah. um, I, I've heard so much about the movies he's made. And I figure now is a great time uh, for us to discuss his, uh, his work of trash cinema on here. So yeah. uh, is all of his work like trash cinema or is it just like a lot of it or. Well, uh, a good chunk. Oh, of I it. know this movie. I haven't seen it, but okay, go on. A good chunk of it is, but like some of it is, is just uh, what I would call um, focusing on people the focusing on the downtrodden, like the people who aren't at the, at the top. Like it's, me it's meant to, it's meant to shock you. Um, mm -hmm. But and he does that in a couple different ways. So sometimes it's very direct, you know, like pe people referencing sex or um, just living in poverty or whatnot. And other times it's just, you know, making a movie about really unusual people like Cecil B. Demented. That's cool. I'm looking forward to it. I've, I actually, this is the movie. When I think of John Waters, I, I see this. Um, I always imagine divine the the main character actor of the film um of pink flamingos that's like the only image i in my head of uh, of his films i'm i'm really looking forward to this i'm glad you chose it so mm -hmm. uh, yeah, yeah this will be really fun it's really funny because like for this past month i've been thinking what am i going to make lucas watch and i've i i've i settled on this movie but i kept feeling really guilty about because i i didn't know if this was going to be like too uh too extreme or something but we'll we'll see how it no goes. no no i think it's like it, it it's really cool to i think um i don't know if i will like it but uh, I do think it's cool to make like high art, like cinema, low art, like whatever the fuck we're going to be seeing in this film. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's like a cool contrast. Uh, I think that's also the point from, it sounds like from what you were saying. Mm -hmm. yeah, uh, yeah. So that'll be really interesting. I think it's a really cool way to use the medium. So. I'm looking forward to it. I hope it's good. I've been watching a lot of uh, nostalgia critics films. I don't know if you ever heard about those. Those mm -hmm. are absolute. Those are horrendous. Those are the worst watch movie watching experiences. And they are people who are trying to make something good. <laughs> not not an exercise in bad taste, as the tagline of Pink Flamingos says. Well, yeah, I think uh, of uh, the cinema snob too, uh, who, who oh my God. reviews similar like low quality exploitative type movies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have something to say about him. I'll say it when we're not recording. Okay. But <laughs> okay. Well, that's the, we're at the end of the video. So, uh, yeah. Um, uh, if you have anything to say about this movie, comment below. We would love to hear from you and have a discussion. Otherwise, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe so that more people can find out about this movie or the people who made it or are in it. Um, and join the Discord as well. It's a link in the description. We'd love to have further conversations about stuff there. And until yeah. then, we wish you the best of luck in your weird and winter western travels. Farewell. Farewell.